Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. Last week we showed you our boas and pythons. This week it's the rest of the collection, and there's a whole lot to see. You're watching Snake Bites. You know, I can't do a show about our collection and not talk at least a little bit about ball pythons. You guys know I'm a ball python nut. I'm just going to show you a few things I'm kind of excited about this year. And we're having a really incredible year of ball python production. We should have a ton of really cool babies. But we finally got into the banana project. I was a little bit of a late bloomer on this project, but I tell you what, since I've gotten into them, they are absolutely stunning. Now, this is just a normal banana, which is gorgeous in its own right. But we also have a few few other ones too. Take a look at this spider banana right here. That thing is really gorgeous. And again, that spider gene does a lot for the color. I just absolutely love the pattern. But probably my favorite of the bananas that we have are this banana pins. I mean, they're just really gorgeous. And what's really interesting is that as bananas get older, they get these black freckles all over them. For whatever reason, pinstripes don't have as many of the black freckles, so I think it makes them a little bit cooler, whereas the normal bananas are just freckled with black. Some people like them, some people don't. Well, listen, I'm not gonna bore you guys with tons of ball pythons in this show, because I show them so often, and we're gonna have a total ball python show, probably within the next month anyways, so let's move on to colubrids. Which boa constrictor morph is co-dominant? A, arabesque, B, leopard, or C, anutheristic? Answer with a comment and keep watching to see if you're right. You guys know that I work with tons of colubrid snakes. I'm not gonna spend too much time because we just dedicated an entire show to them, but I wanna show you just the diversity that we work with, starting with corn snakes. Things like this hypo motley okatee. I just love this animal because of how clean it looks. Again, it's a mutation that hypomelanistic, Okatee, Sunkiss, and Motley. And look at that patternless belly and just how beautiful this thing is. And when they're hatched, oh my gosh, are they just the most gorgeous little baby snakes. And sticking with a really clean animal and a hypomelanistic animal, I wanna show you guys the crimson corns. Now this is a locality type animal. They're from South Florida, the Miami area, and they're bred into hypo, and that's what makes them crimson corns. And again, the thing that's neat about them is it brings out a little more white, and they're a little cleaner than a normal corn snake and they have these really defined saddles and that's what makes crimson so awesome. And this happens to be a black crimson. Now it looks a lot like a ghost corn, but it's actually from the Miami phase. So it's got, again, more white, a little more clean. And again, it's an aneurysmic or a black corn, a hypomelanistic and a Miami animal. And I tell you what, it's just really a cool snake. We work with about 120 to 130 different types of corn snakes, so I certainly can't show you them all, but there's so many cool ones that we're gonna be hatching this year. I'm really excited about it. Moving on to another colubrid that I really love are milk snakes. Things like these Honduran milk snakes are just amazing. This is a hypomelanistic animal and again that just means that it's lacking some of the black but not all of the black because if it was lacking all of the black it would look like this guy down here which is a tangerine albino which is lacking all of the black pigment and has the red eyes. And again Honduran milk snakes are really cool because they get really big but we work with several different species of milk snake and they're all really colorful and really cool animals with those really cool black, white, and yellow triads. Now moving on to another colubrid that we work with are king snakes. Things like this big albino Brooks King. And again, the reason I love Brooks King so much is number one, their feeding response is ridiculous. They just eat like crazy. And as you can see, they get nice and big for a king snake. Again, there's other king snakes I want to show you right now. There's all kinds of king snakes that we work with, but probably the most common king snake out there is a California king snake. They're just really popular in the pet trade, and the reason for that is they're probably the most produced animal, the easiest to keep, and they're really placid animals. They eat like horses and they do really well, and this is a great example of a coastal striped cal king, and what a beauty it is. But one of the king snakes I probably get the most attention when people come to visit are these Mexican black king snakes. Just take a look at that. It's just a glossy jet black snake. And when they're born, they sometimes have a little bit of yellow freckling on them, but as they grow up, they turn jet black and they're just really stunning. They remind me a lot of the indigo snakes, but they're way cheaper and you don't need permits to own them. They're really cool animals. And
And believe it or not, even these variable kings are considered king snakes. Although they certainly look more like a milk snake, they are actually what they considered a variable king. And I've talked about these animals before. You can have a clutch of 10 and all 10 will look radically different, hence the name variable kings. Now king snakes are great animals, especially if you're considering a pet colubrid, but there's still more colubrids that we work with. Garter snakes are another colubrid snake that I've been working with for the last eight or 10 years, and I tell you what, I absolutely love them to death. These are just radix garters, or Great Plains garters, and of course, this is the albino version, which I think is really cool, because it's got that nice yellow stripe all the way down them, and that's really what makes the Great Plains really recognizable, is that really broad stripe, which is really cool. But probably the most common of the albino garters are certainly the checkered garter snakes. The thing I love about these guys, they have live young and they have a lot of them. They'll literally have in the mid 30s for a big female little babies and they'll produce twice a year. I've actually had females lay almost 70 babies in one production season which is pretty outstanding. So again we work with garter snakes but there's still rat snakes when it comes to colubrid so I got to show you a few rat snakes. Rat snakes are what I consider one of the most underappreciated colubrid snakes. We work with a whole bunch of different species as well as color and pattern mutations. In this case, the mutation would be scaleless. That's right, this is a scaleless Texas rat snake. And I've been working with them for several years and they're just solid, solid animals and super beautiful. Now, unfortunately, Texas rats have a little bit of a cantankerous attitude, but I still love them to death. And as you can see, they're really not that bad. When it comes to a little little bit more mellow animal, the black rat snakes seem to be very similar to the Texas rats, but seem to be a much more placid animal. And take a look at some of the beautiful mutations, something like this super licorice black rat, just with that solid white with the little black freckling down it. I mean, what an absolutely gorgeous rat snake. I tell you what, there's a lot of really cool rat snakes out there, but in my top one certainly are these Kunisur Island rat snakes. These are actually a Japanese version version of a rat snake and as you can see when they're born they're actually like a grayish color and they get this turquoise green color when they get old and I just love that really dark eye on them I tell you what they're just some really gorgeous snakes and they're not a high production animal whatsoever they typically only have about six or seven eggs so they're kind of on the lower rung when it comes to rat snakes as well as these bears rat snakes too. Now these are hypomelanistic. Some people even call them T-positive albinos, but bears rat snakes are something you just don't see around a lot, and I absolutely love them to death. But you know what guys? It's not just snakes that I've been working with. Some of these four-legged creatures are starting to catch my eyes. Let me show you what I got. I've really caught the lizard bug over the last six or eight months. This whole wall here happens to be leopard geckos now, and I'm continuing to expand because I love them so much. Look at this beautiful lavender stripe. I mean, look at just the color on that animal. It's absolutely incredible. But probably one of my favorite leopard geckos that I have right now are these the Super Eclipse white and yellow. Look at that thing. Look at how beautiful this thing is. I just absolutely love leopard geckos and I have a bunch of eggs starting to get laid. So I'm really excited to finally start producing. I can show you guys right now. These are two eggs that were just laid yesterday and we're getting a bunch of eggs every single day. So a couple months from now, we should have some pretty cool leopard geckos. But again, there's one more lizard project you guys know I love and I wanna show it to you right now. And that lizard project, of course, is bearded dragons. Over the last six or eight months, I've went absolutely bearded dragon crazy. I don't know, I just think it's that really cute personality. Look at how chill they are. And we have a bunch of really pretty animals that are coming up. Look at just the yellows and oranges that are coming through with this female. And hopefully a bunch of these females will be big enough to breed later on this summer so that we'll have a whole bunch of babies this fall. But probably my favorite animal right here is this hypo translucent Italian leatherback. I tell you what guys, I have so many other projects in the works and if it was up to me, I'd have hippos and giraffes out back. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this quick tour of the place and what we're about. Again, I couldn't show you everything, but it sure was fun having you a part of BHB. A friend of mine just sent me a picture of their cat after surgery with that like big cone. That's gotta <laughs> absolutely suck. It's not that bad though, right? I mean, it's only temporary. You're only gonna have it on for a couple days. 
No, I mean, if you had that on, imagine, you couldn't even work. You'd be bumping into stuff and just getting away with everything. I, I wouldn't like You yeah, can't even eat. Stupid. You guys are both wussies. All right, guys, I got an idea. Since the two hot shots here don't think it's that bad, I'll make some cones up for you two and see how good you guys can work. <laughs> All right. You guys are going to I love it. it. It's right. not going to be that hard. Hang on, I'm making cones. I'll be yeah, back in a second. <laughs> this is going to be great. Oh, ooh, that went good. I like that one. I like that. Brian's been thinking about doing what's called an AMA on the website reddit.com. It's an ask me anything question and answer segment. Now the question I always see asked on there that I want your guys' answer to is, would you rather fight one horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses? They always ask everyone that, so I want to know your opinion. Leave a comment below and let us know. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. There's certainly a lot to look at in the collection, and it's always growing. So hopefully we'll be able to revisit this next year with a whole bunch of new animals. If you guys ever want to follow any of my animal adventures, make sure to hit me up over on Facebook and Twitter, at SnakeBitesTV. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. So which boa morph is a co-dominant? Well, if you guessed A, arabesque, you are absolutely right. Leopard and aneurtheristic are both recessive. They're certainly one of the most beautiful, naturally occurring pythons with that vibrant green color, and they come in a bunch of really cool phases. You can get higher yellow animals and whites and blues and all kinds of really cool stuff. But again, the thing I love about them is they're always perched just like this. So they make a tremendous vivarium animal that you can set up in your living room and just have this beautiful display snake. Not so great with handling.